Hey guys, this is the EC Server Tech, and today what we're going over is recovery and the hose setup. All right. So in this case, we're looking to recover 134i refrigerant, and so we have our 134i gauge set, and we have our hoses, and we have our 134a recovery bottle. So you're going to keep each recovery bottle labeled so you know uh, what refrigerant's inside of it. So the supply houses will normally take HFCs for free and exchange them with an empty bottle. You just need to buy their bottle from them originally. So we buy a 50 pound recovery bottle and it's really not that much money. Uh, you buy that and then you can recover your refrigerant, make sure it's only one refrigerant, and then when you got have that completely full, then you can go ahead and exchange that for free. All right, uh, it doesn't have to be completely full, but they will exchange it. All right, if it's R22 refrigerant or R12 refrigerant, they will buy that refrigerant off of you. Now you have to check with your local supply house uh, to see if they're purchasing refrigerants or not. And if so, then you're gonna likely need their bottle. Uh, they also sell likely disposable bottles as well that you can just uh, do a one-time fill with. All right, so R22 right now, presently, as of this date, uh, which is September 2016, R22 at the supply houses where I'm located at, they're paying $3.50 a pound, okay? So, anyway, uh, first things first, the recovery bottle. We turn our scale on, it reads zero, and then we're going to need to weigh it to check our initial weight in the tank. All right, so we're reading 36 pounds and 12 ounces. All right, on the side of the tank, it's either going to be right here or right back here. You're going to find a tear weight, and a lot of times they're right around 26 to 28 pounds. So you have to find the tear weight. This one actually says 27.9 LB, so that means about 28 pounds. All right, so you can fill a recovery tank 80% of the way. You can't put 50 pounds of refrigerant in a 50-pound recovery cylinder. You can only put 80% of that in there. And to be safe, you can go 2 pounds shy of 80%. So in the case of a 50-pound cylinder, you can put potentially up to 40 pounds in it, but a lot of manufacturers are recommending you, you uh, putting 2 pounds less than 80%. At least I know du DuPont does. Uh, I don't know about other other ones. So to stay safe, a 50-pound cylinder can be filled up to 38 pounds usually. All right, 30 pa 38 pounds of refrigerant. 38 pounds plus the tear weight of 28, and you're looking at 66 pounds total. All right, so we know if we are, if we were at 36 pounds, that we can put another 30 pounds in this. So you have 66 minus 36, and we can put 30 more pounds of refrigerant in this. There's there's only eight pounds in there roughly right now. All right, so, so we're good with that. Now, if we're gonna recover in vapor form, we can then go ahead and put it into the vapor. If we're gonna recover in liquid, we can put it into the liquid. I will tell you that regardless of whether you're, you're recovering in liquid or vapor, if you put it into the vapor port, usually you're okay. All right, if you, if you try to recover in vapor, make sure that you're not putting it in the liquid port. Because what happens is the liquid port has a dip tube that goes all the way down to the bottom, and basically what you're doing is you're putting vapor down there and it's bubbling up through the liquid and it causes the tank to get really hot. So make sure that you absolutely don't do that. If you're, if you're recovering in liquid, put it in the liquid side. If you're recovering in vapor, put it in the vapor side. Worst case scenario though, I, I have seen, you know, you can go ahead and uh, recover either way into the vapor side. Cause it's just, you're just putting it right into the tank. All right. But the whole point is you're trying to keep the tank cool while uh, recovering refrigerant. You don't want it to get over pressurized. So, so that's that. You can use these core removal tools when you're hooking into your service ports. So if you hook this right in, all right, and then you can actually pull your Schrader valve out, all right, your core valve out, and then you can close it off. And then as you're recovering, you have no restriction in the line. All right, so you can use this in order uh, to recover a little bit faster. So since this is 134A refrigerant that we're dealing with here, when we recover the refrigerant out of the system, we're going to re re end up recovering it down to 10 inch HG. All right, so that's down into the green. All right, and we need to be able to hold that. So, so basically while the recovery system's running and it's putting refrigerant into the bottle, what we can do is we can just close this handle down temporarily just for 
half a second, uh, and just check to see where this needle rises up to. If it rises up past 10 inch HG, we're just going to open it and continue to let it suck down to 10 inch HG. Uh, I'll tell you that I was dealing with uh, R410A refrigerant, pulling refrigerant out, recovering refrigerant out of a system that had 13 pounds of refrigerant, and in between 0 and 10 inch HG, I had a pound and a quarter or so, right around there, between 0 and 10 inch HG of refrigerant. I would not advise, you know, say pulling down to that level if you have a leak, because then you're just going to pull air right into the recovery tank. You don't want to do that. All right, but uh, for HFCs like 134A and uh, R410A, uh, you pull them down to 10 inch HG, and for R22, uh, if the system's uh, below 200 pounds, then you're going to pull that down to zero. All right, but you can check out your uh, guidelines on that at the epa.gov just to verify those things. All right, but anyway, that's what you're doing. Uh, you're sucking, sucking the refrigerant down. So if it's 70 degrees and the system's off, and you're working with 134A, you're going to have right around uh, 72 psig, and it'll take a little bit to recover it down to that level, and and but that's how you do it, All right? So you can use these core removal tools so that it doesn't take as long, and your Schrader valve's not in the way. You don't have to use these. You know, you can just go ahead and connect in, and um, just recover right right through your Schrader valve. That's fine too. All right. Another thing is if you are planning on reusing this refrigerant in the bottle, and you you know you want to keep your recovery uh, unit clean. You can actually go ahead and put a filter dryer in place right here. Put your filter dryer in place. And if this is just a flare section right here, you're going to put want to put a little bit of refrigerant oil in there beforehand, the refrigerant oil that you're dealing with. All right, and then you can go ahead or you can put a rubber grommet in there. And then you can just connect it. Make sure that your filter dryer is saying that it is heading in that direction, which this does say. All right, see that? It's heading in that direction, in that way. All right. So, so that'll help keep the recovery unit clean and the tank clean. All right, so as you're recovering, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to attach these, these gauges in whatever one you're going to be working with. If you're going to be working with the vapor side, you connect this right into the vapor. You can go ahead and, and open that up. All right, your refrigerant's going to flow through here. Then it's going to flow into the yellow hose. It's going to come all the way through. It's going to come into your recovery unit. Then it's going to flow out of your recovery unit and right over to the bottle. So this recovery unit does not have to be on. When you purge the air out of the lines, you're going to purge the air out right here. This uh, valve, this blue valve, is still going to be closed, and you're going to purge the air out here. All right, until it's refrigerant, and then you, you stop, and then you close that down. All right, so then you don't have air in your lines. Then after that is when you're going to open the bottle up right here, and then you can go ahead and turn it on. So you, you're going to turn this on, get the air out of the lines, then close this, then, then tighten this hose down, open the valve, then turn the recovery unit on. All right, when you get down to 10 inch HG, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to close this down. All right. Then you're going to close this down, your handle. And then you're going to turn the recovery pump off. All right. That's how that's done. And I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. And we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.